Uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, I'm Greg Holker. I'm the, the director uh, at BB United on the soccer side of things and, and somewhat probably on the strategic planning things as well. But uh, Chris Boys is here as well, who is the president of the club. And then we have a few coaches in, in Jorge, and I know he's working, so he's just listening in from a distance. Averill is here, and, and Tom Noonan is, is also piped in. So <clears throat> there are a few um, bodies with, with some good insight and info. But what we just wanted to do was, was have a space that was open for any questions that you might have about this transition time from the fall season, which we know has just recently ended, um, until the spring summer season. So there are some dates to note in this age group that um, on Sunday, January 29th, will be our first uh, tryout date. And then on uh, Saturday, February 2nd, will be the second date that we have um, for these for these young guys to come and play for us. So uh, that information is up on the team formation page on our website. And the registration link is up and open already so that we can start to take registrations. We don't uh, hold dome practices or dole time for this particular age group. It's kind of an a la carte option. So they do Saturday morning trainings as an option if they choose through our winter training programming. And then Wednesday night skills training um, is also an option through our a la carte kind of winter training program. But there's nothing for the age group that is consistent. We still want children at this stage of their lives to experiment with other sports and have a little bit more freedom and flexibility to uh, to play. So um, <clears throat> that being said, the, the kind of a conversation starter is just to give a number update here on, on the number of boys we have. So at U9, we had 13 boys in the fall, and at U10, we had 19 boys. Um, and we expect, as is the case every year, in the spring, those numbers increase. And so typically, I think we had one really full U9 boys team and two uh, healthy U10 teams. And, and historically, we have uh, two teams at each age group. Um, and I don't see why that wouldn't be the case again. And, and if things go really well, we might be able to add a, a, a fifth team overall, whether that's a, a combined age group team um, or, or a, a single birth year specific group. The reality of those first two tryout dates is is kind of a reference point or a starting point for our team placement. And we had moved away from tryouts for uh, a year ago, and it worked really, really well at this age group from nine through 12. It was incredible. Um, but at 13 and plus, it posed some challenges that um, we had to address and kind of uh, maybe perhaps regress back to the old school tryout model. But it's not really going to affect or change, I think, the way we do things at nine through 12. So typically what we want to do is collect and, and understand as many registrations as possible that exist and then have the children gathered together a couple of times on those two dates, January 29th and then February 4th. And it's an opportunity for us to have uh, an initial sense of where the groups might belong along with the fit from their fall and spring experiences. But we all know at this age and stage of development, the growth is pretty significant and really fast. So they'll change physically quite quickly and, and some of their social characteristics are gonna change, their cognitive ability is gonna shift and adjust. And we're aware of that. And we know that those changes are, are rich. <clears throat> and so, you know, we don't want to ever pigeonhole a child and say, this is where you're at. And we're not shifting away from our development model either. So it's very much a space where we want to encourage um, growth and development through challenges and success and finding a good balance of both. So team placement is not going to be any different for those who have been with us in the past. Those that are new, um, it's, it's really more of a pool setting where our team's trying to train at the same time in the same location and players are able to move across teams and, and across ages. If, if that's relevant as well, to make sure that we get the best fit for each group and for each child. And those things will change over time. They will change. So, you know, what, what it looks like maybe as an eight-year-old or nine-year-old can be significantly different as a 10-year-old. Um, and as they continue to progress, those things are also going to be that it's also going to be true. So that is just a real quick uh, blueprint of what it looks like. And, and Chris and I and the coaches are here just to, to help answer any questions that you might have about, about how this is going to work. And in the meantime, I will continue to admit people as they arrive. 
<coughs> just as an FYI, I did not receive any um, pre-meeting questions via email. So there wasn't anything sent ahead of time to address. So anything that comes up in this particular window of time is is fair. And if you're comfortable putting in the chat, you're, you, you're able to do that. Um, and if you're more comfortable speaking, you're totally welcome to do that as well. And if no one has questions, I know Tom will find one. I was going to say, while well, people, this is Chris Boys, while well, people think about a question, if there are any, or if anything Greg talked about raises any questions, I'll make one comment around <clears throat> kind of the, the modeling piece, right? So, you know, what Greg was alluding to in terms of the development model is, is really something about vertical movement, right? So we love the model that we've developed at BVU where kids can move up and down in terms of different teams. And it really has facilitated the growth of, of kind of all kids. So kids that are lesser experienced, right? So they get play with kids that are of equal levels of experience. And then if kids have more experience and more athletic ability, things like that, then they can, you know, then they're grouped with, with kids with like abilities. And then as kids change, right? We have the flexibility to move. And, and playing with a different team doesn't mean you've been demoted, right? And I think that's an important mindset at this age group that it's just about growth and development and, and the kids will settle in and, and the, the, the movement we've seen in the older groups among our kids, it really, it reinforces that for us that it matters because it, 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 it brings everybody up a bit and it doesn't decrease the ability and, and the potential of the, the kids are a little bit more skilled or experienced. So I saw there was one question or comment in the chat, Greg. Right? Yeah, and I'll punch in the answer here with the link to the web page that has the information. Uh, so we have the Wednesday night training begins. The question is Wednesday and Saturday practice is open for registration on our website. And the answer is yes. Uh, the Wednesday night skills training begins November 30th. And then the Saturday morning training sessions at the Savage Dome begins January 7th. Those are both, uh, I think, five week or six week, five weeks. And then there's three sessions for Saturday that you can choose from. Um, or sorry, for Wednesday nights. The first one's five sessions through the end of December. Then there's one that's January through early February, and then late February through uh, the third week in March. And then the weekend, that's two chunks of five. So there's two sessions of five trainings each. So 10 total weeks. So if you really wanted to maximize everything, you know, you're talking 10 weeks of two times a week and, and five weeks of one time a week additional training for your child, if that's what you're interested in. Um, good question here. It says, are you planning on having one or two teams at U9s in the spring? That'll be up to registration, but history tells us we'll have at least two. Um, and I will determine whether or not as registrations come in, we might be able to even mix in, like I said, a fifth team. So we plan on typically two U9s, two U10s, and then a fifth catch-all group as we roll in additional registrations. <clears throat> Our coach's name for these age groups Almost. Um, Jorge will be coaching a group. I will be coaching a group. And then I'm confirming uh, two others. I think Brian Nacy will have at least a group. And then there's potential for one other. I don't want to name that person yet because uh, he's not aware that I'm going to that we're going to move in that direction. Um, another question above is how are how are boys selected for playing across? Um, and it seems like some are asked a lot and others are asked very little or not at all. And that is true. Um, and, and it really depends on what is appropriate for that child. So if there's a child who is, for instance, on like a U10, U9 blue team and needs a little bit more space and room, we're going to protect that child and leave him in that space. If there's somebody as, who's U9 blue who's at the very top edge of that particular group and, and is ready for, we think, uh, playing on U10 white or sorry, U9 white or U9 red or whatever color the set the other group is, then we're going to pull that one over. Uh, but not everybody is going to get pulled in all directions because not everybody is ready yet for that type of movement. So it will seem like some are getting more than others. That will that will be the case in the early stages as, as they continue to grow and continue to play and, and gain confidence and, and competence, then you will see a lot more movement, uh, in particular at 11 and 12. Let me roll through some more questions. Ready number of teams for spring. Yes, similar concept in the spring. 
um, tryouts will bring initial placements and then we will move and as additional kids register. So the, the reason why we have these tryouts in the end of January and early February is because the TCSL has us submit our teams to the league around February 10th. So we're kind of slammed for time. We, we need to have an idea of what it looks like to be able to give it to the league. And then we kind of shift and adjust and work as much as we can uh, flexibly from there. Spring season training will be April 1st. So that will be the formal practices will begin with the club. And that's always the first day in April. Um, and a recommendation for additional winter training. I can repost in this chat again, um, our webpage. There it is again for those who may have, oops, sorry, that went direct to somebody. Let me go to everyone. Boom. There we go. Now everyone should have that link again that's been that's in this meeting or arrived a little bit later. These are good. And follow up if I'm not answering your questions to, to your satisfaction. Feel free to dig a little bit deeper. Tom is back in. So I think ultimately, you know, how many teams we have and, and who the coaches are of those particular teams is dictated by the number of registrations. And the earlier that we get registrations in, the easier it is for us to plan naturally. Um, and we, we understand that there will be a chunk of later registrations. And that's why sometimes the team, uh, at least the original placement might look like a thinner roster just because we know and expect additional children to sign up and we have to have the flexibility and the space in each of those spaces to be able to use them. And at this particular age, <clears throat> we will err on a smaller roster size because, you know, <clears throat> the unique piece, I think maybe would have been the U19 from the fall where there was 13 players. That's just too many kids. We were in a tough spot. It wasn't enough to form two teams. We don't want to tell any child no, but I think it's too many. I mean, 10 is really kind of an ideal number per each roster. If we can hold 10, awesome. 11, probably as high as we can, we want to get. Um, and seven and eight is still manageable because of the fact that we have that movement, that, that lateral movement, the vertical movement, however you want to define it. So anybody has any other questions, feel free to, to pop them in there. We've got about four minutes left before the the next age group version of the same thing begins. And I expected this to be short, so this is okay. Hey, can I just chime in, Greg, for a moment on that play across situation? Yeah. A lot of it also comes down to the player's comfort. Um, one of the benefits of the pool training is you have the ability to test the child out and make sure that they're kind of ready and value, you know, ready for the challenges. And every kid reacts differently. And sometimes there's players who, whether it's due to consistency or other things, it's they're on the cusp, but the challenge, especially when there's, there's a jump involved or there's uh, you know, there isn't the second opportunity necessary to apply learning. Sometimes it's best to err on the side of caution and build for the future season to allow that framework of success to be built in practice before it rolls to a game. I think one of the things to to really embrace and take into consideration is that this is a collaborative environment and experience for our children. So, you know, for us, it's really about how can we work together with families to find the best place and the best experience for your son. And, and what are the things that we need to know about your child that will help us to um to create that space where that experience is, is meaningful and challenging and rewarding and all of those, those, you know, those things that we consider a really good, healthy uh, youth sport experience. So this is, this is really not a, you know, we're not, we're not choosing or selecting from a finished product here. This is, this is an early entry phase of their development and we're here to support that along. And it's going to look a lot different for a lot of players in a lot of ways. And, and, 
I know that many of you who have met me before know that I care absolutely zero about the results at this stage of development. I mean, all the way through 14 or 15, I don't really care. Uh, it's about playing in a way that allows children to have fun, freedom to make decisions on their own so that they own their own experience and aren't being told what to do. And that gives them an opportunity to continue playing if they choose um, as they get a little bit older and more, you know, past their physical maturation stages. <clears throat> and if there are no further questions, we will wrap this, uh, wrap this short brief meeting up. Thank everybody for your, for your time, just to pop on even for a quick 15 to 20 minute meeting. Um, and hopefully it was a little bit of insight and in, in a couple links and feel free to deliver this to the spaces and the people that you, you know, are connected to on your teams and, and, and neighborhoods so that we can continue to grow our rosters and, and grow, you know, grow our base because the, the people who are most closely connected to this are, are going to be you. Um, it's just, it's just the way it is. So thank you again for all you do and supporting your children and, and for, for believing what we do at, at BB United. Thank you, everybody.